Hello again. Now that we know uh, cache basics, principal locality, and how to compose hierarchies, let's look inside caches now and see how they're organized. And I'm going to divide this part of the section into two just to make shorter videos for you. So the first question is, where should we put data in the cache? Suppose that we have a very simple memory here, okay, whose addresses go from 0, 0, 0, 0 in binary to 11111, okay, from 0 to address 15. Okay? And here's our cache. And as I said before, the cache holds a subset of memory. So the cache is going to be smaller than memory. In fact, they're fast because they're small. One of the main reasons that they're fast is because they're small. The technology and how they're built is also different. But Okay, so, all right, memory is bigger than the cache, and that means that we have to somehow map data in memory to where it goes in the cache. Since memory is bigger, of course, there'll be different memory locations that map to the same place in the cache, okay? For example, one way we can go about uh, doing that is just somehow use the address and compute the index, the location in the cache where the data goes, okay? For example, address 00, we go to index 0. Address uh, 1101, we go to index 1. Address uh, 1010, we go to index 10. And address 0111 would go to index 11. So did you note something? Did you notice something on how we compute where the data goes into the cache? Well, it's just modular arithmetic, right? I get the memory address, okay? I get the, the memory address and do mod 4, okay? Which is the same thing as getting the low order bits and use the two low order bits of memory and use that to, um, to address the cache, okay? Again, so if I get the two, the low order bits uh, of this address, I determine that uh, the index is one zero and so on. Now, um, once we put the data there, okay? So suppose again that I, uh, this address here, of course we know based on the lower two bits goes here, but this address here also goes to the same location in the cache. But now the question is, how the processor know that the data here contains either this one or that one? Some more information has to be stored alongside the data in the cache in order to tell which block of memory is stored in the cache. We lost some information in this mapping, right? So this information has to be stored somewhere. Now, how do we solve that? Well, we're going to use something called tags. Tags are going to be another, you know, a storage element in the cache. Okay, there'll be one tag per data array in the cache, per, 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 per data uh, locate, per, per position in the cache, that tells what address is stored there. For example, uh, say that in our blue address here, 1101, which again, based on the low order two bits, we know it goes into this index of the cache. Okay, it goes right here. But what are we gonna put here? Well, now that we know that uh, address 1101 is stored, I'm gonna store uh, tag 11. So now the tag here, together with the index, I can tell exactly which address was stored in the cache. So now there's no more confusion in this multiplexing of multiple memory addresses into the same position in the cache. A very important question in a cache is what's a block or a cache line? Remember when we talked about spatial locality, we said that we would move data from memory to the cache in blocks, blocks that are bigger than a single byte, okay? And that helps spatial locality because we're going, not only going to bring the piece of data actually needed by your program that's running the processor, but also data that is located close by in memory. So, uh, but now let's see more detail what's a block. Suppose that I say that I have, you know, a block size of two bytes, okay? And uh, I have, again, my memory goes from address zero to address 15. And these are byte addresses, the address of each individual byte, okay? Now, if my system is two bytes, like I just told you, each block, each cache line is gonna occupy, is gonna be map, is gonna map to two bytes in memory, okay? They are aligned. So, it means that line zero occupies address zero and address one. Line one occupies address two and three. Line two occupies address four and five, and so on. Okay. 
So now, the, of course, uh, the cache, since the cache stores an entire block in, a, in, a, in an entry, in an index, okay, so the index has to be as big, so the, the, the data array for each index here has to be uh, as big as the block, okay? So, for example, if I decide to store this uh, block zero here in the cache, I'm going to store byte here, B1, uh, let, me, let me pick the green because it is a byte B1 and byte B2 when it's stored in the cache. If I happen to store this one, I'm going to store byte B1 and byte B2. So the entire block has to be stored in the cache. So the data array, each entry in the data array of the cache has to be as large as the block. By the way, typically cache block uh, sizes are either, you know, 32 bytes is typical, 64 bytes is also typical. Okay, that's, that's a typical size. This is just a simple example with two bytes to make it simple, but in real processors, this is 32, 64 bytes. Okay, let's think a little bit about a puzzle now that might help you with one, with, with one of the assignments. If I ask you the following question, okay, start with the assumption that the cache is empty, okay, and then uh, I'm gonna say now this, this sequence here is encoded the following way. I'm gonna give you an address, comma, whether it was a hit or a miss. If I tell you that I access address 10 and it's a miss, okay, then I access address 11, address 11, and it's a hit. Then I access address 12 and it's a miss. Hmm, the, real, the real piece of information here is that why is this a hit? Well, address 11 has never been accessed before because the cache started empty. So, but address 10 was, and it was a miss. So 11 can only be a hit, is because it was brought together with uh, address 10. So that means that I know that in my cache block here, somehow I'm gonna have address 10 and address 11, but I know that 12 is not part of this block. So what we can say here, we, what we can infer is that our block size is at least two bytes because we brought 10 was a miss for sure we brought the data and then 11 was a hit okay think a little bit more about that with that you can actually this is going to help you solve one of the assignments okay so um, let me talk about one way of mapping data from memory to the cache the example that I gave you earlier is what we call direct map caches okay so direct map means that for each memory location, there's a single place in the cache where the data can go. Okay, that's why it's called direct map. There's a direct mapping. For each memory location, I know exactly where it goes into the cache. Okay, so this example here, both of these addresses go to the same index. Again, because they have the same low order bits of the address. Okay, so what's the problem with this? Well, if I tell you that I want to access address two, six, two, six, two, and so on. What happens? Well, this is address two, and this is address six. They all map to the same position in the cache. So when I access two, okay, I'm gonna put it in the cache. When I access here, I'm gonna put it in the cache. But then when I access six, this is going to be a miss. But when, when I access two, this is also going to be a miss because six has kicked two out. So when I access two again, it's going to be a miss. So the bottom line here is that all of these accesses are going to be a miss, even though I'm only using this one position in the cache. Why is this? Well, we say that what's going on here is a cache conflict. Since two locations that I'm accessing repeatedly map to the same entry and the only place that they can go into the cache, they're gonna kick each other out repeatedly. So I'm gonna have a bunch of misses, even though the rest of my cache could potentially be empty. And the way we solve this problem is using something that we call associativity, okay? So, and this is based on the question of what if we could store data in any place in the cache, okay? But, you know, that, that, is, that could be possible. It could make any data go anywhere in the cache, but that's slow down caches because the circuits gets more complicated, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna tell you why a little bit later. So we do something in between, okay? So suppose that I say that I have a, a, a cache that has, you know, eight, eight positions, eight blocks here. There's multiple ways of organizing it, 
Okay, one way is to use eight sets and have one block per set. This will be called direct mapped. Okay, so that's what I just showed you, direct mapped. Um, now, on the other extreme is fully, fully associative, which means that the data can go anywhere in the cache. Okay? So, uh, direct mapped, again, the data can only either go here, or here, or here, or so on. Okay? So, either go to one place only, not to multiple places. Whereas, in, in fully associative, you can go anywhere here. So, since this one is bad because of conflicts, and this one is bad because uh, it's too expensive, let's see what we can do in between. There's something we call set associative caches. Okay, so I could say that if my cache is 2A set associative, for example, I'm saying that there are two places in a set where data can go. So, um, for example, in our, in our previous example, I uh, showed you that two addresses would collide, right? They would both go to the same um, place in the cache. Now they can go to two places. They can put address A here and address B here. They can both uh, live together. Okay? So now, um, and this has multiple flavors. This is a two-way. If I say it's four-way, there's four locations in my set where data can go. That means that I'm only going to have conflicts in my cache. If, I'm gonna, if I have at least, if, if I have more than four locations that I tend to access repeatedly, that maps into the same set. Okay? An important question in set associative cache is where does the data go? Okay. And uh, let me start with a very simple example. The first uh, thing to know is that we're going to divide an n bit address into three components. One is a, number, a set number of bits to tell which part of the block uh, the address refers to, the offset within the block. Then we're going to have some bits here, k bits, to tell me which index, which set the data goes in the cache. And then whatever is left, I'm going to be used to store the tag. Remember, the tag is necessary to tell where the data, uh, what data is actually stored in the cache. So if I have an, in my example here, suppose that I have a four byte, uh, four block cache, and then I have one, um, I, I have two bytes per block. How many bits do I need for the offset? Well, only one bit, because there's only two bytes within a block. Okay, and let's say that our cache is direct mapped direct mapped. Okay. If I say that I have four uh, blocks, how many bits do I need? Well, I need two bits for uh, the index. If I have a four-bit address, how many bits are left for the tag? Just one. Simple enough. Right? So let's see more examples in set associative caches. That was in the direct map cache. Okay. So um, suppose that I have a different address here now. I have the address 0x 1833. Okay? The block size now is 16 bytes, a more realistic block size than just 2 bytes. Okay? And first thing is uh, 1833 in hacks in binary is something, 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 uh, 0110011. Okay? So how many, how many bits do I need for the block offset? Well, if I have 16 bytes in my block, I'm going to need 4 bits in my offset. Okay? So now, how many bits do I need for the index? Well, it depends on the associativity. If I have, say, if I have one-way associativity, it means we're going to have eight different sets. If I have eight, eight different sets, I need three bits for the index. Now, if I only have four sets, I need only two bits for the index. And if I have four-way uh, associativity, I'm going to need only two sets. That means I need only one bit for, um, for the index. And whatever is left has to be used for the tag. Okay. So now, this ad, let's, let's think about the first one. So here, um, okay, so the first one is k equals 3, meaning 3 bits for the, for the index. If I have, if this is my offset, because it's a four, four bit offset, means that these three bits here have to be part of the index. So it means that's why 0, 1, 1 is 3, okay? But now, if I'm talking about k equals 2, I'm going to use only these two bits, okay? Which is, again, also 3. So that's where it goes in my four 
uh, in my two-way associative cache. Now, four-way associative cache, I have only one bit. So only this one bit here okay, uh, is going to be used um, to determine what index, what, what set or what index, uh, what is the value of the index, in other words, in what set the data goes. Let's talk about block replacement now. Okay? So um, we know that multiple locations in memory can map to the same location in the cache. Therefore, um, in, a, in, a direct associate, in a direct map cache, that means that say, if you put a, a piece of data A here and later uh, I, want piece, I want to access B that goes to the same place, I have to kick out A to store B. There's only one location. We always, so that's an easy choice in what to replace. There's no choice, you just go replace it, right? But if I have um, a two-way set associative cache, there's two places I could put address A here and address B here. Suppose that they map to, to the same set, okay? But now the question is, what happens when I access C? And C also happens to be mapped to the same uh, set. I have to choose whether I, I, kill, uh, I remove A or remove B. The way uh, caches do this normally is to replace what was least recently used because that maximizes uh, temporal locality. We, whatever was most recently used should stay in the cache. Okay, so that means that the least recently used, the one that was used farthest in the past, should be removed from the cache. So let's say that the access order here was I access one first and then B uh, later. Okay, so B was accessed more recently. It means when I put when I access C, I'm going to kick A out and put C here because A was accessed uh, further in, furthest in the past. Okay? So uh, implementing exact least recently used in hardware for uh, set sizes uh, that are larger than two is pretty hard. So they use an approximation called not most recently used. Okay? You can read more about this online or in the book. Okay, so let's end this video with uh, another puzzle, which might help you with the assignments too. Okay, suppose that the cache starts empty. Okay, and again we have uh, the, the the same access stream I showed before, the same notation: address, comma, whether it was a hit or a miss. Okay, suppose that I access ten and it's a miss. I access 12, and it's also a miss. But then, when I access 10, it happens to be a miss again. Well, I just access 10 right here, so what happened? Well, probably happened that, well, ha probably happened for sure. When I access 12, I kick 10 out. So that means that 10 and 12 map to the same, um, so map to the same set, and 12 displays 10. But since the cache was empty, that means that for sure this has to be a direct mapped cache. It's cool, isn't it? Have fun with this and have fun with the assignments.